Okay, 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 okay. How are you guys doing, everyone? I am the Dragon God of Gaming, Damian Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of the Gaming News, where I run down the list of all the gaming news, facts, trivia, and rumors coming out of the gaming industry this week. This week, we have some stuff on the PlayStation 5's crashes and bugs. Some people are getting absolutely banned for some of the stuff that they're doing with the PlayStation 5, and so, so much more. So, without further ado, let's get in. First off, some things for the Xbox Series X owners that you guys must be loving. Anyway, this first uh, this first article comes from the uh, T3.com, which is written by Samuel Willett. And it writes, PS5 crashes and bugs, Xbox Series X owners can laugh it up as there are more PlayStation 5 launch problems. The PS5 has finally been released across the world and fans are getting to getting to grips with next generation of gaming. But the launch hasn't been without its share of problems. Now, with the PS5 having rolled out globally, reports are, are emerging of alarmingly noisy fans and problems with the UHD Blu-ray drive during game installations. Thankfully, however, some solutions may have already been identified, but new niggles are niggles, niggles, N-I-G-G-L-E-S, before anyone talks down to me, <laughs> are popping up, with the PS5 coil, coil wine being the most recent. Cases of PS5s producing excessive noise while playing games are being reported across the internet, with numerous testimonies filling threads on both Reset Era and Reddit, blaming the issue on coil wine. Coil wine is normally caused by vibrations as electricity passes through the electrical components, but is usually inaudible. However, when it does become audible, there's no easy fix for it. But I'm Frank Kinenberg, I am sorry if I botched your name. Uh, game um, game late and game lead as Supercell says the problem may not be related to coil wine at all. It has an easy fix. After partially disassembling the PS5, Kinnenberg discovered that a sticky label had come loose, and following its removal, the issue was resolved. Those looking to attempt this fix for themselves should consult Sony's official PS5 teardown video in Kinnenberg's tweet below. And it's right as justly. Uh, this is actually a reply. Anyone has seen any other cases of this? And from Frank, he wrote, At PlayStation 5, at PlayStation, fan noises sounds broken upon first startup and says like this, disc version can be heard in the whole apartment. Fan brick. Should I return to retailer and how long will I have to wait for a replacement? Other solutions. And then he, he said, updated, fixed. Ruled out coil wine, um, coil whining, reproduced sound with air unplugged. Sound not from bearing side, object in the way. Used security torques to open fan case and found that a sticky label got loose and in the way. Removed label, issue fixed. So he basically just removed something to make sure that it did not keep on interfering with the fan, which actually is not a bad idea. Another issue cropping up for multiple PS5 users involved games seemingly uninstalling themselves after being installed, copied from the Blu-ray discs, or when... Uh, end the sentence. Wow. When a game disc is inserted into the PS5, the game's data is then copied and installed to the console storage, with the discs then only being required to start the game. However, users on Reddit are reporting that if the disk is ejected immediately after the in initial installation process, then the game may disappear and will need to be installed again. This is probably a software error that Sony should be able to patch at a later date, but until then, there is an installation method that is being reported as a potential solution. Reddit user Randy Lahey 35 solution can be found here, which I'm not going to be clicking on for you guys, I'm sorry. Teething issues with newly released electronics are to be expected, and next generation consoles are no different. With Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S owners experiencing their own problems, and that's not to mention their wider stock issues. If you're still determined to grab a console, which I am in the coming days, 
then this week's Black Friday deals is the perfect time the holiday will see a PS5 and Xbox Series X restock, which they did for a very, very limited a time. So act fast and to secure one. You can also check out our roundup of the best... Yeah, yeah. Some of the best places you can go look for these things is Apple, Best Buy, Dell.com, eBay.com, Home Depot, HP, Lowe's, Lenovo, Microsoft, Newegg, Nordstrom, Target, and Walmart. So there's a lot of problems that are plaguing the PlayStation 5. And, well, some of these can be fixed in later dates. It's really not going to be a big problem for us at the moment and could be getting fixed within uh, a patch or two. So hopefully things start, you know, progressing a lot more better than they need to be. Anyway, let's go on to some of the more stuff from PlayStation 5. Last week, I did talk about uh, things going missing from the UK and the terms of the PlayStation 5. And I believe this is a um, a go more go about it. So let's uh, do a brief it. Amazon said it is investigating what has happened to missing PlayStation 5 deliveries and amid reports of theft. So this is a continuation of what we have uh, talked about and discussed last week. So if you guys want to see the original, you know, article or you want to hear what the original article had to say, check out last week's video. It says, some UK customers opened delivery boxes to find unordered items such as kitchen appliances or toys inside instead of the in-demand console. Many feared their console had been stolen in transit with allegations leveled at the delivery staff. We're really sorry about them that and are investigating exactly what happened, Amazon said. Incorrect items being put in boxes is not unheard of, but the shortage of stock of PlayStation 5 consoles and the fact that they are being sold at inflated prices online led to customers fearing their allocation had, allocation had been stolen. This is why I don't want to order mines online. Disgruntled customers took to Twitter to post footy, um, photos and videos of air fryers, dog food, electric grills, or even Himalayan salt lamps, which, funny thing is, I own one. They say they never ordered. While many of the claims cannot be verified, Amazon has admitted there have been issues with deliveries. It says, we're reaching out to every customer who's had a problem and made us aware so we can put it right. Anyone who had an issue with any order can contact our customer service team for help. And this is an actual uh, a tweet coming from Abe Foreman at Stefan Donovan. Donovan. And it says, same boat. It was out for delivery, was on my street, and then outside my house, then delivered. Except it wasn't. Been told I have to wait 48 hours, then either refund or a new one. But there's, there isn't any stock, so I guess I'm not getting the PS5 I ordered two months ago. Whew. Several users reported seeing their delivery drivers pause outside their homes for a brief moment before driving away. And getting a notification from Amazon that the item had been delivered. But others said there are were notes inside the box making clear that the items they were received were intended for someone else. The short the stock shortage also means that those off, um, offered ref, refunds may not be able to buy a replacement elsewhere. Some sites such as eBay have listings for its consoles for hundreds of pounds more than its recommended retail price, which is highway fucking robbery. No one should be having to pay for another console when they've ordered their console. When they order their console, the order the console that is ordered better be delivered. And yeah, that's also suspect that people watch their uh, watch delivery vans outside, stop in front of their house, and then drive away and say Amazon has delivered it. No, that's that basically shows one of two things. One, that the person that's driving that delivery truck is stealing the said damn console. Or somebody had, or somebody at Amazon is ordering it to be somewhere else. Which should not be happening. If my name is on the package, it better get to my goddamn door. Or I'm going to be hunting down your car and I'm going to be ripping it out of the back of your car. Because somebody's PlayStation 5 is going to be mine if that's the case. But that's why I don't like to order you know, in-demand stuff online. 
because it's shady as all hell. People are going to beg and, you know, crime their way to that console. And you're not even going to be sure if you get your console in hand. So I'm not going to waste nearly five to six hundred bucks for it to get stolen by some moron who does not understand that if he can't get the console, oh fucking well. Hunt down the console yourself. I'm going hunting for the mine console in the next couple days. And goddamn, I'll find one. Sorry, but I hate to see people get taken advantage of. Or the fact that they get stolen from when they absolutely had a right to get that console. It's immoral. So, uh, Amazon UK, get your shit together and take a very hard look at your delivery drivers. Because some of them are saying that they see their delivery cars outside and then just drive away and say it was delivered. So, that means some of your delivery drivers are fucking thieves and better be taken care of. Because that's fucked up. Anyway. On to the next article. Um, this is from ScreenRed.com. And this is written by Kyle Willock. And it says thusly. PS5 players are being banned for selling access to their PS Plus collection to PS4 owners. Why? It says PlayStation 5 players are being banned for abusing a loophole to sell access to their accounts PS Plus collection for PS4 players. Why would you even do that? That sounds... You know what? Anyway, PlayStation 5 owners are reportedly being banned for selling access to their PS Plus collection to PlayStation 4 players. The PS Plus collection is a bundle of 20, 20 PS4 games available exclusively for PS5 owners who are also subscribers to the PS Plus service. The PS Plus collection includes some of the most popular PS4 games such as Bloodborne, God of War, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy and Fallout 4. PlayStation 5 owners who are subscribed to the PS Plus service were granted access to the collection at no extra charge, and all they had to do was sign into their PlayStation account on PS5. The play PS Plus collection can be played on the PS4, but only after a user has signed into a PS5 console. According to user Zahawang, I, I hope I did not say your name wrong. Dude, your letters, what are they doing? Z-H-I-H-U-W-O-N-G. Names, man. <laughs> On Twitter, it did not take long for PlayStation 5 owners to find a way to exploit this. And Sony has begun banning PS5 owners suspected of abusing the loophole. PS5 users with access to the PS Plus collection are apparently charging PS4 players a fee to sign into their PS5 consoles, thus giving them access to 20 free games. One user reportedly made more than $133 by charging almost $7 to sign into their account. Thousands of accounts, mostly concern concentrated in Hong Kong, have already been banned for this exploit. For the PlayStation 5 users caught engaging in this practice, they received lifetime bans from the PSN services. Meanwhile, the PS4 users who are receiving two month um, the PS4 users are receiving two month bans. So far, it is believed that if a console registers a high number of user logins with a sing within a single day, it gets banned to protect against fraud. This practice has been in effect for some time now. So it's not entirely clear if the bans are happening because of the PS Plus collection exploit specifically. Sony has not commented on this issue. Uh, oh god. Have a service that rivals uh, X um, Xbox's Game Pass, but the company has hinted at potentially expanding PS Plus and PS Now in the future. If PlayStation does truly have plans for its network services, then that could ex explain the rapid crackdown on the loophole. However, as stated above, the bans could also be a result of the anti-fraud measures set up by Sony, and instead of the exploit itself. That being said, if this is an anti-fraud issue, 
what those PS5 owners are doing is not exactly allowed either. So they would not be let off the hook. This is not the only PSN issue that has been reported this week, as several Ubisoft games were having troubles with their cross-generation updates, which we actually kind of discussed a long while back. So, ugh. Well, a little while back, because it was said that Ubisoft is having problems with getting their games up and running for the PlayStation 5, so, ugh. In this case, it is probably better to be safe than sorry and avoid trying to share the PS Plus collection, at least until Sony gives clarification on these bans. And if PlayStation never comments on it, maybe hold off on trying it at all. At, at all. So, ugh. That tells you everything you need to know. I can understand where Sony is coming from at this point. Because if... People are making money off of the games that Sony is putting out and they're charging fees to sign in to other people's accounts. That is just highway robbery. I don't normally stick up for big companies because there's no need. Sometimes it is good to get one over on certain companies. But at a rate like this, you've already done something wrong. You've already messed something up. So if you decide amongst yourself that this is a good idea, then getting banned for life maybe is <laughs> your best course of action. And also, if you're banned for life, then that basically means, whew, try getting into the place in the network and getting anything done with the, without a PSN account. Yikes. So... Best case scenario, don't do that. Quote. Anyway, uh, on to our last uh, piece of news for this week. And this is shared by Forbes.com. And this is written by Paul Tassi. And this was written on November 28th, 2020. Which was a couple days ago. Actually, yeah, no. Yesterday. Sorry. It says... The PS5 is starting to pull away from the Xbox Series X in one specific way. And it reads as this. As I thought I would, I, I would be, I have been hopping back and forth between my PS5 and Xbox Series X over the past two weeks. Spider-Man, Godfall, and Destiny on PS5. Assassin's Creed Valhalla and now Immortals Phoenix Rising on my Xbox Series X. Initially, I had, been, had a better impression Better first impression of my Xbox than I did the PS5 due to PS5 crashing far more frequently and some issues with cloud saves. But now all that's cleared up after a few firmware patches, I haven't had any more scary crashes and my same games are where they need to be. So as such, both consoles seem roughly equivalent in terms of performance and even if the PS5, PS5's new UI continues to bother me. However, I am starting to feel one major difference between the consoles and it has nothing to do with the boxes themselves. That would be the difference between the PS5's DualSense controller and Xbox, um, Xbox's more regular Series X controller, which has not undergone a significant, uh, as significant uh, transformation. Now that I've stopped playing Godfall and mostly using the DualSense for games like Spider-Man, Destiny, and Call of Duty, I am really starting to enjoy it. And past, the, and past that, it is starting to feel quite weird when I switch to Xbox. And suddenly the subtle differences between ROM worlds now mainly feel like two settings vibrate big or vibrate small. Mm. I am still somewhat mixed on the adaptive resistance triggers with the DualSense. They don't feel great in games like Godfall or Borderlands, but they're better in Destiny or Spider-Man. But the rumble, which I have always liked, now seems like a core part of many of these games to me. And while I may get used to it, over the course of time and kind of forget about it, when I switch to Xbox, it does feel decidedly weird to lose those subtleties. I don't know what the future holds for DualSense, and I would not expect a crazy amount of detailed use for it in a third-party games, at least. But if you can feel in a game like Destiny 2, a last-gen game that does not have a next-gen patch yet, which also has a big marketing deal with Microsoft, you know the controls is doing some things right on its own. And when you really go full Astro's Playroom, which I have played before, go check it out on my channel. Hmm. With it, 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 it's wild. And I would expect at least Sony's first party games, Horizon, 
God of War, Tsushima 2, etc. To really go nuts with the haptics. And you can start to get a glimpse of what of that with Miles Morales through something as simple as receiving text from your mom. To say nothing of frank and a frenetic combat and web swinging. And sure, I'm a, con- I'm, I'm a convert. And this is a noticeable difference between two consoles that really have very, very few differences between them outside of exclusive games or lack thereof. I don't know if DualSense is a system seller but that PS5 needs anything to sell it in the first place other than its mere existence, but it's something that I've really enjoyed and that I notice the absence of when I'm playing on Xbox or PC instead. Well, it tells you something when the controller is one of the biggest differences between consoles. Both consoles are really good and really straightforward when it comes to, you know, things like new age tech, how everything feels and how everything plays. But when you get down to the nitty gritty, the small little details, they can make a big difference no matter what. And haptic feedbacks and different controllers can feel a little bit different. So if you're switching from Xbox and to a PlayStation, there are noticeable differences in how you're playing. And sometimes it can bug you if you're if you're more into one console and it can be more subtle if you're coming from another. So I would say that's a fair comparison to make. And I hope to feel that when I get my console within the next couple of days. Hopefully get my console in the next couple of days. I'm hoping and praying that I get myself a console. Um but I think that's it for uh, the gaming news today. I appreciate everyone for joining me. And thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are awesome. Um, as I was just saying, uh, the, I'm going to be trying to get myself a PlayStation 5 in the next couple of days. And I may give off a small taste of the console if I get it in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully I'll be able to and reserve myself one. And I'm going to be looking forward and looking for it either tonight or tomorrow. So I can have one all set and ready to go when I come and get it. Because I am not going to be extremely happy when I go in and get to get the console. And there's nothing. I'm going to be pissed. So hopefully things work out for the best. Anyway... Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to see some more stuff from me, my link is in the down in the description down below with all of our lovely, lovely creators. I suggest you go checking them all out. But if you guys want to see some more stuff from me, click on my link and come check out some things like Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Mortal Kombat Deception, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, Let It Die, and Looney Tunes Back in Action. So come in and see what there is to see. Because I can promise you, there's over 3,000 videos that I'm on my channel. And I can guarantee you that at least one of them is something that you will thoroughly enjoy. And maybe, maybe, it'll come around to the others. So, I hope it's worth the subscription to you. And I hope it's worth the subscription here as well. So, hey, next time I come back to the channel will be this Thursday when I'm going to be playing, I believe, Course 4. For Kirby's Dream Course. So stay tuned. It's going to get wild. Anyway, till next time, ladies and gentlemen. Good gaming. Happy hunting. And I'll see all you Dragonlings back inside the world of the gaming news. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Some more Damien Dragon action. Peace.